In this day and age, we're no strangers to remakes and people capitalizing on franchises that people love and adore over the years. But the general public probably doesn't know Slumber Party Massacre, so I feel like this is a really strange movie for sci-fi to remake. But here we are. We've got the Banana Splits director on board and a young cast ready to get drilled. Guess it's time to start the slumber party! Even though this is a new movie, we are going to be spoiling it and talking about it. So this movie basically kicks off with a false start. We have a group of women at a cottage and they are stalked and killed by Russ Thorne, a maniac with a massive drill. And one of them lives to tell the story. Fast forward several years later, her daughter is now going camping right across the, the lake from where she was almost murdered because she wants to get revenge with her friends on Russ Thorne. When he comes for us, we are gonna kill him. This story is a hundred percent a love hate relationship. What's interesting about Slumber Party Massacre in general is it is at the core a feminist horror movie. The original, it's a classic. It's written and directed by women. The drill represents the masculinity of the killer. All of the women are strong, they're powerful. They take down Russ Thorne and basically destroy him at the end of the day. In the original, it was symbolism. In this film, it was thrown in your face. Guys, I, I think I think the ladies know what they're talking about, right? <gasps> yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Okay. Um. Who ends up being in the house across the pond, which was the original cabin, was a bunch of guys who are in slow motion, getting topless, trying to rip pillows, which I think is absolutely hilarious. Or like we have like the slowly shot seductive shower scene. I was loving all that role reversal. They're doing all the tropes, but acknowledging it in the film, that's where I have the problem, where they actually blatantly call it out because then it's like, you're explaining the joke. If you have to explain it, it's not funny. I can finally get rid of these. Playing the hot girl is exhausting. It looked great. There's some great kills with a drill. Russ Thorne is fucking awesome. We'll get to him. But there's literally a moment where like Dana, our main lead, calls this out. Like even when she's facing off with, I believe it was John near the end of the film. Okay, this is part of your big feminist plot to get rid of all the men. That was a really sexist thing to say. I get what it looks like. The issues aren't in the women being super powerful. We always root for that. That's what makes Final Girls important in horror movies. And I think Dana was fucking awesome as a Final Girl. However, to just like stop what you're doing and say the line. We are these smart, tough, incredible, kick-ass women. It's like even the moment where like Ashley is going to like fix the car. And of course they have to say, It's a good thing you know how to fix cars. Just let her go fix the car. You don't have to be like, oh, I'm glad you know how to fix the car. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Even the references to the original franchise. I was honestly like, I had my head in my hand. I'm like, okay, you're showing the guitar from two. Everybody's gonna know because it looks like the guitar. But then it's like, Where'd you get that, Sean? I found it in the closet. Sick, right? Oh, yeah. And even use it as a primary prop for the movie. There are moments where it is done really well, like the space baby shirt. I think that's a really great nod that isn't too in your face and only shown briefly in the original. Even having the replica of like the Hunky Boys magazine, but like they have these little subtleties. It even is... like the same shot of the girls on the couch, also the reverse shot of Russ with the drill. I will say, cause we've been pretty nice Negative right now. I am gonna talk about some things that I did like about the humor and how the film was done because going back to the role reversal, the moment where the mechanic is like fixing the car. You're not gonna make it tonight. What about now? I don't see how that's gonna help. I laughed so hard because they didn't be like, he's a mechanic pig. He should be all over your boobs to fix stuff. The fact they didn't mention it, that's what made this joke great. And even the guy one, guy two bit. And I found guy dead in the cooler. Guy died in the house. No, that was the other guy. There were two of them. I'm a sucker for Abbott and Costello, and this is your classic who's on first. I thought that was even more shitty than the rest of it. Guy one, guy two. Yeah, but when did guy two go out? Guy two is dead. I think the writing just sucked across the board personally. <laughs> Especially when they were trying to like have their reveals, even in our false start. So did you ever figure out who he cheated with? No. 
Well, maybe I had a good reason for doing it. <laughs> Meanwhile, one of the girls says something about the ex-boyfriend. Can't control her eating and they start vomiting. You're like, yeah, I get it. She slept with him. She's pregnant with his kid now. And then when they reveal it, it's like, yeah, you didn't need to say it. I slept with Chad. Or when like the mom is like, be safe, be safe. And then like they hang on that shot of her hand in the air with like the dun dun dun. Like we're supposed to not know that that was the mom. The biggest twist of this film is when they have Kay revealed as the killer. It was so obvious. Oh, you don't wanna stay here. We don't really have a choice. Unless you know of someplace else we can stay around here. Oh, it's available. What a surprise. Come to this house, I'll drop you off. Here's the Wi-Fi that I control. Here's the cookies. Kay left them at the door for us. She's lucky Russ didn't murder her when she dropped them off. And you're like, yeah, Kay is the killer. How she was tied in, you're like, I don't know, is she like sister, like mother? It was a little bit of a stretch. The age between Russ and Kay looked a little too close to be mother son. What are you doing out here? Snail hunting. I think Russ nailed exactly the Russ from the original. I love you. The way that he delivered his lines and his weird facial expressions while holding up the drill was perfect. We're not trying to completely knock this movie. I think the cast did an excellent job. Everybody played their parts pretty well, uh, although I did still hate the sister. I think that's just a trend in Slumber Party Massacre movies. Hate the sister. I can still hear you. Dana knocked it out of the park as like our main lead. I think she was badass. I think all the girls were badass and I liked that they actually had weapons. They had a plan. Everything just made sense as far as like what their goal was. There's three of us. We outnumber him. There's eight of us. <sighs> So if no one's ever seen a Slumber Party Massacre, they're coming into this for the first time and they're seeing these fun, playful characters who are also really badass in a very over the top killer. And the kills were good. I absolutely love the kills, the production value, the actors involved. I do think the director, Danishka, did a great job. And Susan Kelly, who wrote it, also wrote Leprechaun Returns, where the jokes weren't as evident. Which is funny, because some of the tropes in that film reoccur in this film. Yeah, which is totally cool. It's just done better. When they did it in return, they were doing it to develop characters like a woman who's handy. It was not as like a, hey, women can do this too. This was like, this is her character. In, in this one, it was a blatant shot at women can do what men can do. I don't hate it, but I didn't love it. This was middle of the road for me. I think this is gonna be a better watch for people who aren't huge fans of the franchise. There are some things for fans of the franchise, but I think they're too in your face. And ironically, the women seem weaker when they need to call out how strong they are. But I think it is still worth watching, but it's not a hard recommend. So I'm gonna give this two and a half wooden barrel dick boys out of five. This should come as no surprise. Like I said earlier, it was a love-hate relationship with this film. I did like a lot of it, but there's also stuff that I was irritated with. It was too in your face. They had to explain all their jokes and it was a lot more fun in moments in the film when they let the scenes play out. I thought all of our actors did a fantastic job. The cast was great. We didn't mention this, the score was fantastic too. It was awesome. <laughs> it's a fun time, but not a great time. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this film two and a half untitled goose lamps out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do wanna check it out, links are in the description, but also check out our review of the first movie. I think it's better, 100% it's better. And I think our review is probably better than this one also because we're not complete assholes. And subscribe to our channel for less asshole-ish reviews or maybe more. When it comes to Squatch Terror, we get kind of vicious.